Hi there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Extractive and Abstractive Neural Document Summarization with Transformer Language Model. It's from Element AI and it came out this year itself in the month of April. So it's a pretty recent work. So to give an idea about what this paper essentially talks about, the paper targets to solve the problem of long document summarization. Unlike the summarization models that you see around these days, which target at most of handling 512 words or maybe 1024 tokens at a time and create a summary out of it. This paper talks about how can you extend such technique and deal with 1000 to 10,000 word sequences and still come up with a decent summary out of it. So that's essentially is the main idea. And to achieve that, they go around and build a summarization model that uses extractive as well as abstractive techniques using transformer language models. Okay, so let's go through the paper first. We present a method to produce abstractive summaries of long documents that exceed several thousand words via neural abstractive summarization. We perform a simple extractive step before generating the summary, which is often used to condition the transformer language model on relevant information before being tasked with generating a summary. Okay, so what they're saying is, they're talking about proposing a system that generates abstractive summaries for long documents that exceed several thousand words. So the method that they propose is to do a simple extractive step. So they would first apply an extractive summarization technique that would kind of extract important sentences or important segments from the paper, which they will use to condition the transformer language model and generate the final summary. Okay. We show that this extractive step significantly improves the summarization results. We also show that this approach produces more abstractive summaries compared to the prior work that employs a copy mechanism while still achieving higher root scores. Note, the abstract was not generated by the authors. It was generated by one of the models presented in the paper present on an earlier draft of this paper. Oh wow, this is so cool. So yeah, that is the whole idea. And they also saw like the method that they're proposing is generating more abstract summaries and getting a higher root score compared to the previous work that has been done in this domain. Okay, let's move further. So in this contribution section, they will again talk about the same thing that they demonstrate a transformer language model that is surprisingly effective at summarizing long document articles and outperform a typical sequence to sequence approach even without a copy mechanism. Okay, so the copy mechanism that they're mentioning over here is mainly targeting the pointer generator networks. So if you want, you can just go through that technique as well. I'll just let you know in short what it does. Just like in a typical sequence to sequence network, while you're at the decoder end, you're supposed to generate any word at any time t. In that case, the copy mechanism also gives you a flexibility to directly copy a word from input sequence rather than generating something out of the box. So that is the main idea. And the second point that they write is their approach produces more abstractive summaries compared to the prior work. So which is exactly what they have also written in the abstract. Okay. So before we see into what technique and what algorithm exactly do they use, they have a diagram that talks about the entire flow end to end. So you start off with a document. In this case, they are talking about research paper. It passes through a module that does extractive summaries. So this is the segment that is doing the extractive summaries. As you can see, they are highlighting certain lines and segments from the paper that are important. Then they do a language modeling training on top of that by formatting a training data as shown over here. They use the introduction section, the extraction summaries, the abstract and the rest of the paper. Okay, so these are the four major segments that they chunk out. So on this full context, they train their language model. And once the language model training is done, the inference is done by providing the prefix context of introduction and the extraction summary. And abstract is something that the model produces over which they evaluate using Rouge and Blue metrics. Okay, so this is the entire flow. Now let's move forward and see how they are exactly doing extractive summarization and how they are training the transformer language model. Okay, so a model comprises of two distinct and independently trainable components. The first one is the hierarchical document representation model that either points to or classifies sentence in a document to build extractive summary. The second one is the transformer language model that conditions on the extracted sentences as well as parts of the entire document. 
So this is exactly what we have seen in the previous diagram. The first one is talking about the extractive summary. And once you're done with the extractive summarization, the transformer language model is trained, which is conditioned on the extractive summaries along with the introduction of the paper and some other segments. Okay, moving forward. So they describe two neural extractive models. The first one is the hierarchical sequence to sequence sentence pointer. We use hierarchical bidirectional LSTM encoder with word and sentence level LSTM. Okay, so they are trying to build a hierarchical system that first encodes word level information and at the output end, once you are done with encoding the word level information and you have a sentence vector, then you iterate over all the sentences with the previous representations that you have learned and you get a final document representation. So that is the main idea. And formally they define it as the extractive model considers the document as a list of N sentences. So S1 to SN are all the sentences in the document D and each sentence as the list of tokens. We are given the ground truth extracted summary of M sentences, which is one to M, where I is nothing but the indices of the extracted sentences. The procedure to determine the ground truth extraction targets are identical to the previous work of finding two sentences in the document that have highest truth score with each sentence in the summary. Okay, so what they're saying is a document D has n number of sentences and each of the n sentence has some list of tokens. And for each document, you have m ground truth labels. So how do you produce the ground truth? They have talked about the previous approaches what people have been doing in this domain which is about finding sentences from the document that have highest root score with the sentences in the summary. So you start with every sentence in the document and calculate its root with the summary and eventually sort out the top ranked sentences that have the highest root with the summary. So that is the idea. Okay, moving forward. We use an encoder decoder architecture for this extractor. The encoder has a hierarchical structure that combines a token and sentence level RNN First, the sentence encoder or the token level RNN is a bidirectional LSTM that encodes to each sentence. Okay, so what they're saying is they have a hierarchical structure in the encoder side that first takes into the consideration of each of the word sequences, passes them through LSTM and outputs a thought vector or the hidden representation from the last layer, which they call it as a sentence representation, which is denoted by SI from S1 to SN. So pictorially, this would look like this. You have LSTM cells. You input each word at a time. And at the output end, you have a hidden representation, which you call as S1. Let's say the words were corresponding to sentence one. Then you have another LSTM unit, which is again bidirectional in nature, that takes all of these sentence representation as an input and try to model a contextualized sentence representation and then call it as DI. So this is the two level hierarchy that they're talking about. First you encode words, get a sentence representation. Then you do a sequence modeling over sentence sequences to get their contextualized representation. Okay. The decoder is an autoregressive LSTM taking the sentence level LSTM hidden state of the previously extracted sentence as input and predicting the next extracted sentence. Okay. So decoder is same as what you see in any of the sequence to sequence architecture. For example, if you're considering a machine translation task, then at any time T, decoder will output a word by considering the hidden state of the previous word and also the output it generated at the previous step. So taking both of them as input to that cell, it tries to generate a new word. In this case, it is exactly the same. Instead, at every step, you try to output a sentence. And then you would calculate the cross entropy against the actual set of sentences that would have been a part of extractive summary and what you're trying to generate. Okay. So that's what they have written through these equations. Let's go through them. So they define HT, which is the hidden state with this formulation. Okay. So let me make a figure and then make you understand all of these equations. So these are all the LSTM cells. We'll just consider three for illustration purpose. This is HT minus one. This is HT, this is H of T plus one. And here you had H of T minus two. So all of these are the recurrent hidden states that gets forwarded with every time step. And these are nothing but input at time T. This is input at time T plus one. So now if you see HT is what? Is a function of H of T minus one. So if we want to calculate HT, 
it is a function of h of t minus 1 because this is one of the inputs and then it is a function of input at that point so this along with something else this is the formulation for that now let's understand h tilde t so if you see this equation carefully you have the hidden state ht at any time t you multiply with di so di is nothing but all the contextual representation of sentences that we have learned in the encoder side so you take this hidden layer and do a dot product with every sentence in the input and store it as alpha t then you pass it through a softmax to get a distribution between 0 and 1 so this is the attention weight distribution that you get over sentences and once you're done with that you multiply each of the attention weights with the sentence representation and do a summation you get a context vector now this is a context vector that is weighted by the attention scores so once you have ct in place you concatenate it with the ht pass it through a linear layer and you have h tilde t and this is something that you again plug it at this point so this is the basic idea i hope it was clear it's very basic and it's similar to how it usually attention works so only this step is something new over here rest all of the steps are pretty common so if you know like how attention works this must have been easy for you okay let's go forward so that is one of the techniques of how do they do extractive summarization just to summarize you input word by word you get a sentence vector representation then you have another lstm layer that takes in sentence representation and learns the contextual sentence representation then you have decoder which does attention over all the sentence vector representations and at every time t in the decoder step it tries to produce what should be the next sentence that should be a part of extractive summary so that was the full idea this is the second method that they talk about which is sentence classifier we use a hierarchical lstm to encode the document and produce a sequence of sentence representation d1 to dn where n is the number of sentences in the document considering if we have a research paper in place from which we are trying to do the extractive summarization so the first step in this case is to get a sentence representation using hierarchical lstm network once you have that you normalize the embeddings by the number of sentences that you have in the document you pass it through a linear layer plug it in a non-linearity and you have a document representation which means now you have a representation of the full research paper so here bd and wd are the learnable parameters and once you have the representation for the full research paper given any new sentence you plug it over here you get its representation you already have a representation for the research paper or the full document you concatenate both of them you pass them through a logic model so that's what they have written and also this model will be trained based on cross entropy loss because you are doing a binary classification problem okay so yeah, these were the two models that they have talked about for doing the extractive summary going forward. Okay, so talking about transformer-based language models, instead of formulating the abstractive summarization as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence problem using encoder-decoder architecture, we use only single transformer language model that is trained from scratch with appropriately formatted data. Okay, so what they're saying is, a usual paradigm in which an abstractive summarization models are trained is in the format of sequence to sequence. Whereas in this paper, authors say we don't use that approach, whereas we just use language model with properly formatted data. So what do they mean by properly formatted data? They have written, we organize the training data of the language models as that the ground truth summary follows the information used by the model to generate the system summary. Okay. So the way they train the language model is by formatting each input in a certain format. So they'll be having some background knowledge. Let's call it BG. And then they'll be having the ground truth summary. Let's call it S. So if BG had, let's say 100 tokens. So this is all the 100 tokens in place. And then you concatenate all the tokens from the summary. Let's say there are 50 tokens. So this is one sequence that goes into your language model. And at every step you try to predict one word at a time and this is how you optimize so model is essentially trying to maximize the likelihood of the full sequence okay and during inference they just give the background knowledge and then start doing a conditional generation by doing a sampling at every step while generating the summary so this bg is given as an input and we start sampling and start generating s one by one one word at a time so that is how you do inference okay moving forward
when dealing with extremely long documents that may not fit in single window of tokens seen by a transformer language model, such as entire scientific article, we use its introduction as the proxy for which the enough information to generate the abstract, use the remainder of the paper as in domain language model training data. So what they're saying is, if the length of the document is pretty large, which is usually in the case of scientific articles, archive for example, document length is around 7000 words, which is pretty huge. So in such cases where the transformer model cannot fit all of those sequence at one go, authors use introduction section as the proxy for having entire knowledge from the research paper. They use that information to generate the abstract and they use all the other sections of the paper what they had for pre-training the language model. Okay, so in such cases, we organize archive and format data set as follows. Paper introduction, extracted sentences from the sentence pointer model, abstract and rest of the paper. So these are the four major segments that they take out of every scientific article. And with other data sets, the paper introduction would be the entire document. There would be no rest of the paper. Okay. And during inference, they use top K sampling with K is equal to 30 and soft max temperature of 0.7 to generate the summaries. Okay. So I guess we are done with the paper. That's it. After that, they have the comparisons and discussions. So this was the major diagram that kind of summarized everything to how things are happening. And I hope you are clear with this idea because I have explained it in the starting section. So yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this paper. If you did, do share it with your friends. Make sure you hit the like button and hit that subscribe button for more interesting content. We'll meet you in the next video. Bye.